everybody and welcome to a time with the SL we bless God for a beautiful Thursday hallelujah 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 amen let us pray Heavenly Father as we gather in your presence this evening for our Bible study class the first study in the month of November we come with open hearts Lord father we are ready to learn and we are ready to obey we ask you Lord to illuminate our minds with your divine light even as we delve into your word which is pure and bright father we ask you to grant us wisdom and understanding profound to grasp the depths of truth that are bound in your word guide our discussions today our thoughts and our reflections that they may be grounded in your divine directions father may this study today deepen our love for you and may it equip us to live as a fruitful and true followers that you have made us. Bless our time together. Our Lord and our God, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So today we are looking at the glory of God. The glory of God. The glory of God. And this is a concept that is very big. Glory, a concept that is very big to understand. Amen. Our text is taken from Luke chapter 2 verses 8 to 14. We all agree that God is bigger than all of us and for us to be able to comprehend God within, our, within the limitations of our humanity is not something that is easy. It's not something that is easy. Amen. He is revealed as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He is the one true triune God. He is omnipotent. He is a sovereign God, yet he is compassionate and good in relating to our humanity. How do we describe God? In our search for justice, God is the ultimate judge. He is our defender. He is our healer. He is our provider. He is our savior. He is our comforter. He is our Abba Father, his daddy. So we see that God is glorious in every single aspect. Every aspect, God is glorious. We're going to look at the glory of God in different ways this evening. Now, when we look at the Bible, the glory of God has revealed to us through the natural beauties of the world, as the psalmist declared, says the heavens declare the glory of God, Psalm 19 verse 1. So we see that the glory of God is not just a feeling, it's not an event in the Old Testament. It's like a spiritual tsunami. It just comes anytime it comes. It's, it's, it just shows us everything that is contained in the character of God. And so if you want to translate that word glory, it's like heavyweight, glory, big. The biggest, the grandest thing ever. You know, it's very difficult to explain. It's difficult to understand. So I believe that the glory of God refers to the entire embodiment of God, who God is, what God is, what God does. And if you read Isaiah 42 verse 8, it says, I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to carved idols. So the glory of God is the beauty of the spirit of God. It's not an aesthetic beauty or a material beauty, but I believe that it's the beauty that comes out of the character from all that God, that God is. The glory of God is eternal. And we also have a glory, but the glory of man is the beauty of man's spirit. And we are fallible and it passes away. That is why you can like somebody today and then tomorrow you don't like them again. You can like someone one minute and then you don't remember that thing that they did. The glory of man is temporal. But that glory of God which is manifested in his attributes together will never pass away. James 1, 10 to 11. The Bible tells us, and you know that man's glory will pass away like the flowers fade away in the heat of the sun. There are so many people that, so many famous people that have died. What happened with their, to them? You've forgotten about them now. You've forgotten about them. 
Somebody is no longer in power. Say a president who was such a charismatic, had a charismatic nature. Once the person is no longer there, it's gone. The glory is gone. Revelation 21, 11 says, having the glory of God is radiance, like a rarest jewel, like a jasper, clear as crystal. Let's look at Revelation 21, 23. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light, and its lamp is the lamp. Hallelujah. Now let's look at glory in us. Let's look at glory, because, you know, if you took part in our prayers this morning, you will know that you and I, have been given glory from God. So, Isaiah 61, 60 verse 1, the prophet calls, Arise and shine, thy light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you, has come upon you. So, God's glory is upon us. Our glory has come. Genesis 1, 26 to 27 tells us that God created man and woman in his image and likeness. It refers again to the glory of God, that glory that is upon us. Man was given the authority to name the co-inhabitants according to their nature and character with that glory. So we don't have the nature and character, same nature and character that animals have, that trees have. Our nature and character is that of God. Genesis 2, 7 tells us, He formed the man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And God formed the animals and birds of the air from the dust of the ground or the earth and brought them to man for him to call them or to christen them. Genesis 2, 19. So yes, you and I are from the earth, but our glory is from God. Hallelujah. Man shares the glory of God. We share in that glory that God has given to us. Let's look again at the glory of God. Genesis 2, 15 to 17 tells us that the Lord put the man in his garden of Eden with the full glory. The full glory was there in Eden. Isaiah 43, 7, Therefore he told that everyone who is called by my name, who I created for my glory, whom I formed and I made. I believe God is talking to you and I, yes? So we were all given a glory. However, man has lost that glory of God by sinning. Who owns the glory? God is the owner of the glory, but it has been given to you and I. Man lost that glory by sinning. That is why in Romans 3 verse 23, Paul writes, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Genesis 3, 7. Adam and Eve have lost their glory. What happened? They lost their glory when they disobeyed and they tasted the forbidden food. So, one thing I have learned about glory is that glory has to be reflected in every activity that we do. Glory is not a one in once in a lifetime thing. Are you following me this evening? Even the Bible tells us, 1 Corinthians 10, 31. So whether you eat or you drink or whatever it is that you do, do all to the glory of God. Everything you do is connected to the glory. Even Jesus emphasized it in Matthew 5, 14 to 16. He said, let your light shine through your goodness. Let the glory come out. Let men see you and glorify your Father in heaven for your good works. You are the one doing the good works. Now the mistake a lot of people make is, and they continue to make it, is they continue to trust in earthly things. Continue to trust in earthly relationships, trusting in your own power, in your own talent, or your own business, or your, your own beauty. Oh, even the goodness they see in others. That's why I always tell people, say, be very careful. Stop saying when I grow up, I want to be like you. Because that thing you are seeing in them is also in you. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength because his glory is inside of me. Do you understand? And whether we want to accept it or not, things fade away. Things fail. Because we 
are only temporary carriers of the greater glory. So when these things fail, when it doesn't work any longer, they begin to despair. You begin to say somebody let you down. What we need to understand is that it is only God's glory that is constant. There are times that I might... Okay, so for example, we are trying to set up everything now at the Rebirth Center in Lagos. And we are trying to set up our studio. So we've been expecting equipment to the equipment hasn't arrived. And I had a choice to either go somewhere else to take this ministration or remain at the center and work something out. And I tried and so far so good. So far so good. But I knew that had I left here, I don't know how the traffic would be between now and my destination. So I might have had to send a message at some point today to say there is no time with yourself. And there will be people who are waiting who are disappointed. Do you understand? So you are always going to see as you go through life, God's glory being made manifest here and there. It can be in a person. It can be in a forest. It can be in a house. It really doesn't matter. It's just the presence of God. God doing his work through your life, in your life. Sometimes we hear these amazing stories of love, amazing stories of heroism, fiction, non-fiction, or even in our own personal lives. We see the glory of God at work. But guess what? Who does it go back to at the end of the day? It goes back to God. Psalm 87 verse 7 says, All my springs are in you. It all comes out of God. Whether it is a spring of grace, a spring of mercy, a spring of love, a spring of faith, a spring of provision, a spring of healing. Everything that will lead you to give you glory to God. To give you glory to his name. Not only that, but he also gave his one and only son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to come and die for our sins, to take our place. He put the entire sin of the world on his shoulders so that you and I will be cleansed of all our sin and we will be made right before God. So when we think of giving glory to God, a lot of the time we can often and very easily fall into that trap and think of it as a demand. I have to give God the glory. It's God that did this for me. Thinking that it's something that has to be done. No. From the biblical viewpoint, from the Christian viewpoint, is the very opposite of the intent. Do you know why? Because every single thing, and we all, a lot of us fail to understand, Everything that God wants us to do ultimately is for our own good. Yes or no? Who is going to benefit from it at the end of the day? I have people, they, they send me messages. Ah, oh, SL, God bless you. Thank you. Um, thank you for that word. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you. Let me tell you, if not for rebirth, I don't think I'll be praying. If not for rebirth, I will not be as close to God as I am. Who is benefiting from it? Me. Me. Do you understand? I'm benefiting from it. So there's no thanks that you are giving me. It's because me, I am the number one recipient of all that God is doing. If not for rebirth, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know God as I know God. If not for you coming here to pray, why would I have that, 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 that constant um, consistency? Do you understand? So we have to all know that God is for us. God is not against us. So when he says, when we are told to give him all the glory, at the end of the day, we are just saying to him, Daddy, thank you for everything that you have done for me. Father, I'm so appreciative. Without you, I don't know how I would have done it. And then we look at glory in the church. Let's look at glory in the church. Ephesians 3.21 To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. We see that even within the body of Christ, the glory of God is there. 
And it's not just in the New Testament. Let's look at Exodus 40, verse 34. Exodus 40, verse 34. Let's look at Exodus 40, verse 34. The glory of the Lord filled the tent of meeting. The glory of the Lord filled the tent of meeting. Let's look at 1 Kings 8, 11. The glory of the Lord filled the temple when the cloud filled the temple. Amen. Or, let's go back to the New Testament, Acts 7, 55. But he, being full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God. You see that we all need this glory. Even the prophet Isaiah had seen the glory of God in his vision in the temple. Isaiah 6 verses 1 to 3. What does this tell me? It tells me that the glory of God is actually a visible power. It's visible. It's visible. This visible power is also known as Shekinah, which is the Hebrew name given to the presence of God that dwells on earth. The Bible tells us that the nation of Israel, they saw the glory of God when when God came down to meet with them on Mount Sinai. Exodus 24, 17 says, The sight of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on the top of the mount. So what is the glory of God? It's nothing more than the presence of God. The presence of, the, of God with the people for simple and deeper understanding. When he wants you to know him more, even the prophet Habakkuk, he got a glimpse of that fiery glory too. And he described it as like the sun blazing in the sky. His brightness was as the light. He had horns coming out of his hand and there was the hiding of his power. Habakkuk 3 verse 4. Is it not the same glory we are talking about? Is it not the same glory? This is that same glory that raised Jesus. The same glory that raised Jesus from the dead. That same glory was, was, was that fire at night and cloud by day that took the children of Israel through the wilderness. Exodus 13, 21. It's the same glory. But you see, it's manifesting in different ways. The glory of God's presence. That is what it is. 1 Chronicles 16, 28 to 29 says, Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples, ascribe to the Lord, glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due to his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. Romans 8, 18 says, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. Oftentimes when I'm going through a, a challenge, I use this particular scripture a lot. And it gives me encouragement. Why? Because I know that, you know, the bottom line is this. I cannot live on this earth for more than a hundred years. Do you understand? But there's a place that I'm going to, that I'm going to live for much more than a hundred years. Where it is just beauty. It is just the glory of God. So it's something I look forward to. So no matter what challenge I go through, I'm like, mm, this too is going to pass. Is going to pass. A hundred years is not forever. A hundred years is not forever. Second Corinthians three eighteen tells us we reflect the glory of God, being and, and being transformed into His likeness with ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord. It is a time. It passes. It passes. But the glory of God is with us. Romans eight eighteen. And 1 Chronicles 16, 28 to 29. Beloved, the glory of God is the good news of the Messiah's salvation to you and I. Light is the glory. And the glory is the life of the light. Luke 2, 10 to 11. One thing I know is that the glory of God increases when peace increases. I see that in my life. Peace increases when favor increases. And this happens with one another. You know another thing? When favor increases, then love increases. 
when love increases, then you notice that forgiveness has also increased. And when forgiveness increases, everything is possible because Jesus Christ is now increasing inside all of us. Beloved, we want to see the glory of God. And let us say what we have learned in John 3.30. He must increase and I must decrease. If you want to see the glory of God, let us begin to pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you even for this word we've heard this evening. We worship you, Lord, because you are the Alpha, you are the Omega, you are the resurrection, you are the beginning, and you are the end, and you are the life. Father, we thank you because you always answer our prayers. You are indeed an everlasting, caring, and faithful Father. So, Father, this evening we say, anyway, we have fallen short of your glory, Lord. Please have mercy upon us. You, Lord, are the one you have the final say in our lives, our Father and our God. Please do not allow our lives to be at the mercy of any wicked or evil person of this world. We pray, Lord, that you give us the power to live above sin. Father, the power to live above the activities of the flesh, that your glory will be activated and revealed in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, every stone that is blocking the sunlight of our glory, let it be rolled away now in the mighty name of Jesus. Every satanic bondage, every satanic limitation in our lives, Lord, let them be removed in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, you are the God of new beginnings. We want to thank you, Lord, even for this new month, November. We ask, Lord, Father, as this month has started, that you will open a new chapter of miracles, breakthroughs, today in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, turn every reproach, every hopeless situation in our lives into dumbfounding miracles and testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I want to pray that for everyone who is trusting you, because this is the 11th month of the year, whether they are trusting for a life partner, trusting for the fruit of the womb, Father, that they will see the power to conceive in the mighty name of Jesus and bring for their own children. People that are trusting you for new jobs, Father, for empowerment in different ways, Father, that you will meet them even at their point of need, Father, for those who are trusting you for healing, Lord, Father. Father, that you do a new thing in their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Any satanic embargo that has been placed on anybody's life here, Lord, Father, we ask, Lord, Father, that you will lift it supernaturally in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we believe your word concerning everybody's situation here. Father, let there be a performance of your promises in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, every unprofitable struggle in the lives of any of these ones praying today, my Lord and my God, let it come to an end in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, please, we ask you for your mercy. Father, do not let our own be impossible. But we know it is not possible because God with you, nothing is impossible. You do everything and you make all things possible in your own time in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray all these things in Jesus' name, Amen. Our Father and our God, we thank you even for this time. We ask, Lord, Father, for your guidance and your wisdom to apply everything that we have learned here today to our daily lives. Father, thank you for revealing your truth to us, Lord, Father. Help us to use what we have learned in our lives. Help us to practice what we have discovered and May everything bear good fruit, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, strengthen us to live out every single word in every area of our lives, Lord, Father. Father, help us to be a light to the lives of those that are around us. For we have prayed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless each and every one of you. I thank God for your lives. I pray that you have enjoyed this ministration as much as we have enjoyed it this evening. Um, today we have our prophetic declarations at 11 p.m. on Zoom. If you're interested in participating in this program, um, kindly send an email before 10 p.m. West Africa time to info at rebirthrwc.org. God bless you. Have a fantastic evening. And remain lifted in God's presence always. Amen.